Target hit! Torpedoes! everyone and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today we are looking at the Vermont, the USS Vermont that is, the crowning glory of the new American battleship Tech Tree. And the reason we're starting, well not starting with because we've already looked at the Kansas but we're going straight up to tier 10 is the question is it worth it? Because if I want to get, if I want to go through a painful tier 9 grind and I'm just assuming on defaults that the tier 9 grind is painful, then I want to know if the tier 10 is actually worth it. So, what's the Vermont like? Well, um, to nobody's great surprise, the Vermont didn't exist. I mean, none of these battleships existed. These are basically battleships out of a parallel universe where the Naval Treaty in 1922 didn't happen, the uh, hull side tonnage restrictions didn't happen, and the standard battleship designs were pulled forward and just continued. And the Americans would build really, really big battleships, sort of in an interwar period, and eventually probably have these refitted with better AA for World War II. That's more or less what we're seeing here. Uh, so, if we want to understand where the Vermont comes from, we have to look at um, we have to look at somebody who's called uh, Benjamin Tillman, uh, Benjamin Pitchfork Tillman. <laughs> And I love that nickname, was uh, a senator in in the US. And uh, he was on one of the committees that was overse overseeing battleship uh, funding, battleship construction funding and, uh, and construction. And um, Pitchfork Tillman was annoyed with the Navy because apparently every time Congress approved a budget for a battleship, uh, the Navy built something that was much bigger than what they approved and was over budget. And he really didn't like that. So he came up with a cunning plan and he said, all right, uh, dear Navy, instead of doing this, the other way, doing this the other way around, you are going to design a maximum battleship, as in the biggest possible battleship you could want. So this whole running over budget and making bigger ships than, than, than approved is going, kind of going to come to an end. And um, the people at the Navy looked at each other and said, what <laughs> What are we going to do with this blithering idiot? And decided, well, uh, since he's sitting in the committee, all we can do is, uh, well, design a really, really big battleship and just hope we never have to build it. So they came up with what's colloqu colloquially known as the Tillman designs or the maximum battleship designs. And the final design... And I think they, some sources are using the least idiotic <laughs> declaration of design, was actually presented to Congress at some point, and that's the Tillman 4-2. It called for a 72,000-ton battleship with 15 457mm or 18-inch 18 18 guns <laughs> in five triple turrets. And uh, that, that was clearly the inspiration for this ship, because... This this uh, triple smokestack in the center here is is already very very similar, only that uh, you see that superstructure here, in in front of the uh, the third turret, uh, that was kind of not there, but there was another turret under that one, which wasn't super firing, but uh, which would have just kind of sat underneath that turret there. 
But yeah, uh, other than that, the Vermont is pretty much, I think, closest to a Tillman 4 uh, 2 because it's just one turret removed for sanity. And other than that, it is pretty close. So we have a Vermont class battleship, 77,000 tons displacement. And uh, let's, let, let's go through the numbers and then we'll, we'll do some comparisons. Uh, 62,000 hit points, pretty much up there with the uh, with the tankiest or like I think only the Kremlin has more, but um, quite a lot, quite a large hit point pool. The armor, the armor uh, advantage that the tier eight had uh, and, pr and probably tier nine had about their their other tech tree branch equivalents isn't quite here anymore because it looks like it's reasonably similar to what the Montana has. Which makes sense because you are in, you are in uh, tier ten. I would have wished for her to be a little bit sturdier, but uh, you're still not quite at Yamato levels, or obviously nowhere near German levels. The speed is well absent, <laughs> but we're used to that by now. These things are not known to be particularly quick. With twenty two knots, uh, still the the rudder is reasonably responsive on this ship. The guns. This is obviously where it gets interesting, and that's the bit everybody wants to know about. Uh, these are the Ohio's guns. Only that, the Ohio gets eight of them, and this thing gets 12 <laughs> in, in four triple turrets. In return, you have the obvious 29 second reload, which means you can fire your guns twice per minute. Uh, 15.7 uh, kilometer range is okay, and the damage is decent, but obviously not murderous. The secondaries... Uh, um, just just the standard set of secondaries. There's nothing special about those, and the the uh, AA is pretty good as well. Surface detection obviously is abysmal. She just like her predecessors gets the precise aim, although it's the precise aim one. But she does get four charges, and she gets a defensive AA, which more than makes up for uh, for the differences to the Montana. So uh, once again, true to form, this is a reasonably tanky. Uh, Lots of guns, very, very slow reload, very slow ship, with pretty good AA and a very good torpedo def uh, defense. But yeah, let's go into comparisons. So uh, obviously, if we compare her to the Monty, to the Tech Tree Tier 10, uh, we'll see that uh, we'll see that she has more health, not quite as much fire and flooding resistance, but a significantly improved torpedo damage reduction. So you can take the occasional torque with this thing without getting too hurt. Uh, Monty obviously is faster, but um, Vermont is actually more maneuverable than Montana by, by a de decent margin. So while you're waiting for your guns to reload, you can actually do things like turn the ship around a little bit <laughs> and try to dodge some shells. Although the thing is so huge that you, re you reasonably you're not going to be dodging very much in this. Um, the guns obviously being the 457 millimeter variety, don't have quite the range as the Montana has, but do have, they do more damage and uh, have the 300% Citadel bonus from the extremely large caliber as well. So if they Citadel, then uh, they do hurt. Uh, the secondaries are fewer in number than the Montana's and they're older, but other than that, uh, yeah, they're just your normal American secondaries. And yeah, the AA, the large caliber AA isn't quite as good uh, as Montana, but with the defensive AA up, you're more than, uh, you're definitely more powerful than Montana on, on AA duty. And the, well, you know, we don't need to talk about uh, concealment on top tier battleships. So what if we compare her to the Vermont, uh, to, to, to the Ohio, and just to, uh, to see how she matches up against the premium. So once again, um, more hit points, and uh, when we look at the guns, we see that uh, the Ohio's guns have better range and faster reload, but not by a huge margin. And the Vermont's turrets actually tra traverse faster. Other than that, they're pretty much exactly the same guns. So although the, uh, the Ohio's guns are supposedly uh, 48 uh, calibers in length, and these are 45 calibers in length. So given that they're hypothetical guns, I... I'm just looking here at the damage numbers and they look identical. So they might have different dispersion. That, that's entirely possible. And different penetration values. But yeah. Uh, Ohio still has a monstrous AA also because of the large small caliber AA range. 
So she sits pretty much. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say she's necessarily much more powerful or less powerful than the other ones. Uh, I think she sits in in a very balanced spot. And uh, I, I know I have seen um, I have seen seen people raving about the ship and doing like an average of hundred thousand points of damage. Uh, I don't know what they've done to it, but that's not my experience. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I feel like she sits pretty much in a similar spot to where you would sit with a Monty or an Ohio. Uh, modules. I actually have the artillery plotting room uh, to get better range because her base range is a bit on the short side. Now, if you put the historical camo on and get the range extension from that, it might actually be quite viable to play with uh, the dispersion mod. But the dispersion is pretty good to start with. I mean, you're not going to get all guns on target and you're not going to hit any cruisers at range, but... <laughs> Um, this might not be a bad, uh, bad switch if you decide to invest into the historical camo. Uh, deck protection mod, because, well, she does have a 25% fire and flooding resistance, but she burns pretty easily. It's a very large ship and very easy to hit. So uh, this, this has kind of proven useful to me. And I'm, I've actually got the steering gear mod 2 here, uh, because she is pretty good on the rudder so it's it's not a bad thing to do i've also played around with the air defense mod but you know when you're not having carrier battles it's not really making that much sense um uh, elite bonus yes uh you probably want range because this is really one of those ships that you need to play at range um unless the enemy team does utterly stupid things i mean i I've played on, on the Asian server, and we've had games where we're literally in a battle line. Like, you know, like a 17th century style, a ship of the line. Everybody was lining up their battleships, and then we were just lobbing shells at each other. It was the most boring battles I've had, I think, in a year or two. Uh, but yeah, you do need the range, because if you poke your nose out too much, um, then you will, you will get hurt by things like Yamatos, definitely. Uh, the commander, and once again, I have not put a, a fully a fully upgraded commander in here because once again, I'm not sure if anybody has one around. Possibly, but you'd have to retrain. So I'm just I'm just trying to keep it more on the average uh, outfit side. But uh, you definitely want the air defense expert, and you it, you don't really need the fire supremacy for another precise aim. I think uh, you can if you want to. But with a large hit point pool, I feel like Survivalist is a better choice here. Marksman, obviously, you want, even though you still can't get uh, both shots, uh, uh, two salvos out. But what you can do, for example, is if you're in a turn, you can use it for uh, for your forward turrets and then uh, fire your rear turrets a couple of seconds later once, you're, once you've turned enough and you're not really going to regret it that you wasted it because, you know, you're not going to get a second shot anyway. Uh, extinguisher, not really a question. Okay, uh, I'm using demo expert here to, uh, you know, just disable stuff if possible. And the honor seeker, because I don't really need compartment maintenance. Once again, um, most it is extremely rare that I'm perma flooding in ships. So uh, it's not usually a skill I take. Now, the uh, APCS is definitely the skill that you're going to want. Because while these guns are 457 millimeter, she has kind of a similar problem to what I've experienced on the Ohio in that they're good, but you're going to be hard pressed to get a Citadel at range. And once again, with a ship that does 22 knots out of the box, you're, going to, you're also going to be hard pressed to get close to anything unless the enemy team plays completely stupidly and gives you the chance to get close and shots. At close range, obviously, you're going to Citadel the crap out of everybody. But at long range, I think in, I've had like six, seven games so far, I think I've, Citadel, I've scored one Citadel. Uh, on, I think it was on a, on a, on a French battleship or, or on an Iowa or something. So uh, citadels are not frequent in my experience. And again, I've, I'm playing this without the APCS. So uh, we may have to actually do a maxed setup with this, with APCS, and see what difference that makes, because the camo is expensive, <laughs> as is common in tier 10. So 6,000 gold is a lot, uh, which means we're not going to be sailing with it. But yes, it gives us hit points, range, dispersion, and all the good stuff. And actually more torpedo damage reduction, which is which is awesome. So if you want to play this ship um, a lot, 
in tier 10, the historical camels are always a good investment. But obviously, if you're a free-to-play player, you're not going to have one of those. So, you know, we're, as usual, going to use the Seaborn Assault. Um, lastly, the Battle Honours. What do we have? Uh, sail to Victory. Uh, uh, destroy 120 aircraft. That's doable. Uh, destroy 50 cruisers. That's going to be surprisingly difficult because uh, the shells aren't the fastest. It takes them a while to get on target. And um, you can see a fully broadsiding cruiser at 12 kilometers. By the time your shells make it there, it's no longer it's no longer where it used to be. And you get one or two hits in. And uh, chances with these high calibers are that you, if you're not hitting them dead center, you're probably over-penetrating. So 50 cruisers is actually going to be reasonably difficult. I see this more as a ship that you use against battleships because you need something large and stationary to unload your shells into to do some reasonable amount of damage. Because with the 30 second reload, you really, really, really can't waste the salvo. Right? If you're shooting at a Worcester at 10 kilometer, by the time your shells get there, the Worcester is no longer give, gonna give you broadside. And even if he is, you're gonna get two or three shots in, maybe five, um, let, it, let it be two full pens and, and three over pens, <laughs> you know, uh, it's not much. So that might take a little bit of time. Um, that's that's actually going to be easier to destroy 40 battleships because battleships are your main target in this ship. And um, 120,000 points of damage in a battle, that should be doable because once in a while you get an enemy team that just you know ignores you and you can sail right up to and blot them in the side. And at close to mid-range, this thing is absolutely disgustingly murderous. The problem is that in normal circumstances, you're not going to get there. So, uh, right, uh, let's, let's have a look at some gameplay. We're up here on Fire's Lantern. It's a obviously a tier ten battle, and it's a it's a pretty uh, it's a pretty decent mixture. We've got an Essex, Yamato, Conqueror, Iowa, Buffalo, Seattle, and Shima on the enemy team, and it's a domination battle, which means I actually get a chance to move the ship forward a little bit. In a base capture, you really just want to stick where you are and uh, do the do the old lob shells around the countryside on the other end of the map every every half minute. But uh, we're going to head over to C-Cup and uh, just in case the carrier comes around here, we have some uh, really, really respectable AA. So this is one of those battleships you don't want to get your, uh, you don't want to get your, your planes near. This is a no-fly zone. So we need to keep that Benham alive. There are two cruisers out there and uh, because he's going to be useful for cupping because I'm not going to be in the cup anytime soon. <laughs> But we've got a Monty with us as well, so if the enemy carrier comes this direction, then, um, yeah, <laughs> he's extremely welcome to do so. But it looks like the carrier is actually circling around the other cap, uh, cap circle. Okay, so there's uh, two both cruisers and one destroyer spotted on our side, and there's one battleship down there. So it's three versus four, unless that cruiser up in the north is deciding to go for A cap, which, which is entirely possible. So, um, 23 knots with uh, all the consumables and whatnot. We're slowly making our way into the battle line. And uh, we have some shots out. Okay, there's a Seattle. Now, the problem obviously is, can I actually hit him from here? Ah, it's going undetected, so I'm gonna get a blind shot out and it's just gonna be my forward guns that make it over. But uh, if we're lucky, we get a hit in. Yeah, we got one hit in. <laughs> 2,000 points of damage. And now we still have to wait only 17 seconds for the guns to reload. <laughs> Okay, there's a buffalo, but I don't I don't see him, so I don't think I have shots at him. Okay, I'm not sure what Seattle is shooting at, if that was Seattle. But uh, there's Yamato as well. Yamato's shooting at me, so uh, that's more like what I'm supposed to be fighting. And um, he, he does he does a nice 14k of damage <laughs> on the first salvo. So uh, let's see if we can return the favor. Um, not quite. 10k, not too bad. But uh, yeah, um, Yamato's hurt. And there's Shimakaze. Okay, so I'm going to have to slow down because there's going to be torps in the water. And I'm not sure what that Seattle is doing, but um, I'm going to have to turn in because there's probably Shima torps coming. So uh, I, I can't actually get all my guns to bear. And it looks like the Seattle is actually rushing us, which is hilarious on many on many levels. Uh, and of course, I'm just over penetrating him. But uh, yeah, there come the Shima torps. I knew these were in the water. So let's see if we can avoid most of them. They're probably going to take one. Uh, yeah, we took one, no flood. Okay. 
And we'll just have to turn the other way to avoid the other ones now. We got we took two. Uh, something. Not not to be avoided. Okay. I, I'm really not sure what this Seattle is doing there, but Benham has goofed up and hasn't managed to actually blub the Seattle out of the water. So <laughs> this is a regular a regular derp fest again over here. And um, yeah, now now Seattle has realized that there's a destroyer, but now the Seattle is dead. Yeah, if it wasn't for the Shima tribes, I would have killed him a minute ago. Um, Shima is still out there somewhere, so I do have to be careful. I don't want to get any more further, and I am coming under fire by both Yama and the Conqueror. And if the carrier is coming this way as well, we'll see. But yeah, there's Shima. All right, Benham, you do have to deal with Shima. I have got Yama problems. Okay, Yama has missed. So we'll get the precise aim up, get the forward turrets firing. And then we've got enough time to actually fire the rear turrets while the skill is still active, because we're gonna, not going to reload in time anyway. Just keeping an eye on what the Shima is doing over there and trying to trying to dodge. Oh, okay, we've got a Citadel. Yay, my second Citadel! <laughs> in the Yamato, against the Yamato. Uh, some more Yama shots. Uh, okay, Republic, would you mind taking a couple of bit of fire here? Because I am running low on hit points. But um, oh, some more shots out at the Yama. And there's some torpedoes. I have no idea where these are aimed. They're not at me. Maybe she was, uh, Shima was trying to torp the Benham. But I, I am able to heal up a little bit again. I'm almost back at 30k. And we're just slowly chipping away. And Yama is still firing at me. Ow. <laughs> and I'm back to 15k. <laughs> yeah, Yama shots hurt uh, in this thing very much. Uh, but we have a Yamato of our own coming in to, to take, take some fire. And I think I've managed to get behind the island. All uh, right then. Um... But we've already done 50,000 points of damage and we are not dead, which is good, generally. What does it look like? Enemy teams holding two cups, but we're, ahead, we're one kill ahead. And with uh, Yamato and Republic here, that enemy Yama is going to be dead. So I'm going to be see, I'm gonna go around and see if I can get some shots out at the Conqueror. Uh, because while we're not holding cups, it looks like we're going to be ahead in kills very soon. And that means the Conqueror has to actually back off. Uh, which also means he has to give me broadside. Now, I can't really quite see where he's going. That's another problem, the rendering distance, obviously, at long ranges. But I'm going to slowly start making my way up north. And, um, yeah, that was, a nice, that was a nice salvo. So, with a precise aim, you can get 10 out of 12 in on, on 11 km against the broadside in Conqueror. It would be nice if I had got two citadels with that. But, you know, I'm not complaining. And uh, uh, reasonably soon, my guns are going to be reloaded. And the Conqueror is still... Is he still broadsiding me? I think he's still broadsiding me. He hasn't learned his lesson yet. Uh, double fire. Need to damage on that because I don't have the health. Uh, shots out. And I've got one more heal coming up. Now I do have to slow down because there's a buffalo. and uh, But I, I think we've got this in the bag. It's just Conqueror and Conqueror is almost dead. Uh, see if we can duke the next salvo from the Conqueror. Not quite. But I think he doesn't. He hasn't got his overshot a little bit. And he hasn't managed to set me on fire. I would have been dead, maybe, otherwise. So, um, yeah, that, that's that one wrapped up. We're just going to need to kill the Conqueror. Shots out. And uh, then the team's probably going to take care of the rest. There we go. Uh, can we still get shot at the Essex, maybe? Oh, he sets me on fire. Mm -hmm. I might survive it. We'll find out. Uh, I'm not sure I can lob this. I don't think so. And I think the Essex is actually going to be dead by the time I get there. But uh, we're slowly, we're slowly accelerating. Yeah, I don't think I can lob this island. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of what you want to do in this ship. Um, stay at range, lob shells, and uh, she's doing a reasonable Precisely amount of damage. Activated. Look at that buffalo stuttering over there. The rendering distance isn't helping, but he's fully broadsiding and he probably hasn't seen me. Or hasn't, yeah, I'm not even spotted. So let's see if we can get some hits in. Uh, nine hits, but it's not enough to kill the buffalo. Uh, yeah, once again, um, typical American guns. <laughs> not the punchiest out there. You might have to. You really might need the APCS skill to do uh, to do some more of this thing. But uh, we've done 87,000 points of damage. I'm not sure if we can still get the kill on the buffalo. Let's see. Two, one. No, shells are taking too long to get there. But um, yeah, uh, I would say this is this is kind of the potential that she has. Let's have a look at the second one. And here we are on encounter in base capture mode. We've got Yamato, Freddy, Buffalo, Saint Louis, and Triple Shima. Oh joy! 
Oh, well. Um, against destroyers, I mean, you, you have a good torpedo damage reduction. That's really your saving grace here. Other than that, with a 30 second reload, uh, by the time you've switched... By the time you've switched over to HE and got your guns reloaded, the, the, the destroyer has probably got another torpedo salvo on the way, so... Alright, what are we gonna do here? Um, depends where Smolensk and Z are going. Okay. I um, must head forward a little bit, but uh, I don't want to go too far with Triple Shima out there. There's definitely something going to come around, and it looks like Smolensk is going to head... Where, where is he heading? Where are you going? Um, okay, Smolensk is heading towards the islands. So, that means Z is probably reasonably alone there. Now, Z versus Shima, my money's on the Z. But um, obviously he might need some fire support if, if any of the cruisers are uh, coming around. And yes, Smolensk, I, I don't know where he's going even. Um, no idea. All right, you do you. I'm going to help the Z out here. Uh, I don't want to go too far ahead, just in range such that I can start lobbing shells at the battleships back there. Because that's really what I'm here for. What is that over there? Uh, it's a Freddy. Okay. So Freddy's heading over here. Now I only have a blind shot where is he going he's kind of going yeah like looking at the minimap he's angled like that and i will get shots out here and then we're just assuming that the aim was true and get the second salvo out as well yeah that's three hits second salvo going on the way all right um z is scouting up nice and there obviously is the shima and there's another battleship no that's still the freddy okay uh, so one Shima out there. I don't want him to get anywhere near me, but I have some shots out from here at the Freddy if he decides he wants to come any further. Uh, obviously, um, he's going to learn the hard way that you don't you don't push like that if um, if you don't yet know where the enemy where the enemy team is. Now I am spotted, but I think he's over pushed uh, right through the center, got himself into a crossfire, and it's obviously up against with triple DD. You don't push like that. I think that's too aggressive. And uh, yeah, now he's he's just broadsiding everybody pretty much, and he is shooting at me, but uh, that's not going to do him any good, <laughs> not at this range, not in a Freddy. Uh, so uh, he is probably going to have a very short game. Second salvo out. There's some more Freddy shots coming in, and mine. <laughs> Sorry, Smolensk, if that was you setting him on fire. All right, and it looks like we've got two out of three Shima spotted. So uh, and and the Z is actually almost at the enemy cap circle. So I might have to I might have an opportunity here to actually push along this flank a little bit, and see if I can I can get uh, I can get some flanking shots out. Because that Shima there is really low, and the cruisers are on the other side. Okay, there's the Saint Louis. Now taking turning my guns around is going to take a while, but um, I, I can take a pot shot from the other side of the map. There's the Buffalo. I don't think he's in range, but. Um, Saint Louis is the better target. Uh, it's French, so it's probably quick. I'm gonna give a lead a little bit like this, and yeah, that that was a questionable dispersion. <laughs> One hit. <laughs> Sometimes it trolls you, but I can still get the rear turrets out just in case he turns. All right, um, Z, how are you doing over there? Uh, you're capping, which is good. And uh, everyone's going to head back to the cap to defend, obviously. So I do have to be a little bit careful about Shima Torps here, because I'm definitely in range of these things. Uh, but we do have uh, we do have the cruisers over there. And uh, I still want to get some more shots out in that Saint Louis. Okay, can't lock onto him. No, can't lock onto him because of the Shima, so manual targeting it is. Is he going to die to Torps? Otherwise, I'm going to kill him. Doesn't look like he is. Shots out. He looks like he's in a turn, and one dead suddenly. <laughs> I almost looked like I hit him in a superstructure, but uh, must have hit the deck actually. All right, uh, Shima over there. Zeke, you can deal with Shima, right? Um, yeah, that Shima is very low. Okay, now I'm gonna start shooting at Yama, but uh, this is probably about as farish as I want to go. I'm a little bit further, maybe. I do have to watch out with the Shima torps eventually. But uh, shots out at Yama. And um, there's still all three Shimas around. Uh, I'm not sure where they all are, but... Oh, another Citadel! Yay! <laughs> Third Citadel. Okay, that's not bad. Okay, there's Shima there, so I'm going to need to slow down and turn in. Uh, Z, you're killing that Shima there, right? He's right there. He's on no health. Yeah, you're shooting at him. Okay, perfect. So that thing's dead. 
Um, and we're gonna get some more salvos up. Okay. Yeah, these are the torps from the other side. I, I'm gonna have to unfortunately take some of those because uh, not much I can do about it, but the torpedo damage reduction holds up. Why is that Shima still alive? He's a oh, come on. You seriously? You're joking, right? And he's gonna torp me. <laughs> how, how did you leave the Shima alive on, on, on 10 health? Oh no, and I'm running into the torps. <laughs> And my damage comes on cooldown. Oh, it's gonna hurt. <laughs> I mean, you're not gonna die, but um, it's gonna hurt. <laughs> so, and Yama shooting at me as well. Uh, so yes, that 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 could have been avoided, really. But uh, oh well, uh, such is life sometimes. Uh, some more shots out on Yama. I think I can switch the uh, the lock on back. Yep. And another sit okay, I, I'm I'm taking my word back here. She does she does a decent amount of citadels on the Yama. Well Nayama takes me out, but um Alright then. <laughs> I, uh, sometimes it's like that. First six, seven games you play, you're not doing any dumb you're not doing any citadels at all, and then you, you're doing two in a game. But uh yeah. Um is it is a decent chip, honestly. And uh, while we're watching Z trying to torque the other Shima. Yeah, it's a it's a decent ship. No, in his defense, it's the only ship the only ship left in the enemy team. Well, it's a decent ship. It's uh, it's right in. I, I'd say she's right in the middle with uh, things like Ohio and 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 Monty. Uh, it's not overpowered or crazy overpowered. And I mean, I haven't played it with historical camo and fully upgraded captain and all these things. But um, definitely a powerful ship. Uh, you have to stay at range, but your guns, when they hit at range, can be pretty devastating. Now, the 29 second reload means you don't get many salvos out, but at least when you get them out, you get them on target, unlike in the Montana, where they go all over the place. So, uh, yeah, this is um, this, is a, this, is a, this is a decent ship. I wouldn't say she's overpowered. Uh, I would take her out over something like Kremlin any day. And... Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of top tier battleship gameplay because of the extremely static nature. So, if but if that's not like uh, if that not, if that's not discouraging you and you like this sort of thing and you want to have something that has an absolutely murderous AA plus uh, very big guns, lots of them, and um, you're okay to play from range, then yeah, this is this is a good this is a good choice. So, is the grind worth it? Uh, personally, I'm not going to because I'm not even going to grind up to Montana because I just don't like these kind of ships. Um, what I'm going to, uh, but but if if you if you're into that sort of thing and if you already like the Montana and the playstyle, I think this is pretty similar to what you're going to get on Monty. All right, that's it for today. Thanks everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye.